keep a good distance. That's not creepy at all. Yes. 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 Gone on you with the pick and roll. Younger flame. Well, I guess we get news back from the video. This time I'm playing a game called Take Me Home. It's like a novel, graphic novel type of thing, type of horror game. <clears throat> the truck rambles along the gravel road. So, so, are you gonna tell me why we're out driving at, let's see, 11.34 p.m.? I need to get out. That's fine and all, but did you really have to wake me up to take me with you? So, how come you're wearing that hat at night? Just feels right, I guess. As long as you don't get us killed due to not being able to see a damn thing. A car passes by. I wonder what they're doing out so late at night. I could say the same thing about you, you know. I'm sorry for bringing you out here. Come on, don't apologize. It's fine. Really, if you really got something going on, I want to be here for you, man. The truck approaches a turn. Uh, let's take Indiana Street. The man turns into Indiana Street. I always like driving at home. At, at home. Driving at home. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> it's relaxing. Has a comf has a comforting, mysterious atmosphere. Yeah, we're relaxing knowing a dare can jump out at any second and get liquefied by your car. Come on, man. Don't kill my vibe. I guess there has been a pretty big boom in the deer population lately. I always see them on the way to work in the morning. You know why, right? It's because nobody hunts anymore. Ever since that thing started showing up in the village, people just don't hunt anymore. The monolith? Is that what they're calling it now? That's what I heard the folks at the station calling it. Make sure this is loud enough. And not just too loud for my ears, of course. Okay. Monolith, huh? I guess that's a fitting name for what name uh, fitting name for it with the size of that thing. You know, I saw it last week. You should have heard the sound it made. The man stops the car. A figure stands in the road in front of it. <sighs> it's a deer. Deer in the headlights. It's not getting out of the way. Try honking at it. The man honks his horn at the deer. It continues staring, unflinching. Weird. Can you drive around it? If you take it slow, you can probably go around without freaking it out. Maybe I should just honk again. If I keep driving, it might even get even more scared. Your call, I guess. Honk or driver. Yeah, I'll drive around it. I guess I'll try going around it. The man begins to slowly drive around the deer, being very careful to keep a good distance. That's not creepy at all. Okay. <laughs> the deer suddenly lets out a shrill shriek. The deer runs into the woods. Jesus, what the hell was that? Yeah. I, 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 the. Don't I? D don't. N no. The light haired man is visibly shaking. Hey, are you okay? You're shaking. Hey, why don't you stop for a second so you can calm down? The truck pulls to the side of the road. The bearded man puts his hand on the other man's shoulder. He's still shivering with a grim look in his eyes. That, that scream. That must be the scream he was talking about. <laughs> Bro, it's alright. That thing is gone now. It's fine. Do you think we should turn back? No. No, I'm fine. I'll be fine. I can't go back. Not now. Are, are you sure? Yes. The car starts up down the road again. The car drives down the country road. So how was work today? Same as usual, I guess. Had to deal with that same old lady. Same old delusions, you know. The one who said that the birds in her backyard were talking to her. Yeah, that one. She kept going on about how the birds said this and that. And that, and how we're going against God's will or something. Give me a second. Um, kind of want to close my blinds since the sun is starting to go down. 
So I'm gonna have to improvise on the way. Let's see. Get this out of the way. There we go. Alright, yeah, that one. She kept going on about how the bird said this is that and how oh okay, I already read this. I've heard that birds are very intentional. I'm sure they are, however, I still can't say I'm a fan of birds. Apparently say I'm going to hell for selling hardware. Don't you? They added another deadly sin. The eighth one is peddling tools and appliances for a reasonable price. Haha, ha, I guess I missed that one. They say it's pretty serious. God doesn't really care about murder. But you sold a hammer to some dad from the suburbs to build a deck with? Eternal damnation. You say deck, but all I hear is monument of hubris. I think I said that right. And a cursed structure testifying a downfall of humanity. Ha ha. It's been a while since since we've been able to joke around like this, you know? This is that why you took me along? I guess that might be a part of it. You're not mad at me, right? No, I'm not mad at you. Why would I be mad at you? I mean, wake you up in the middle of the night so you can go on this drive with me. Don't worry about it. I want to be here for you, man. If that means going out on drives like this, then I'm fine with that. And besides, it's nice out there, out here. I'm glad. Ooh, okay. Gar approaches another turn. Mm, let's go down Grant Street. The man turns into Grant Street. One of the weird things about night driving is that sometimes the darkness will play tricks on your eyes. Sometimes it makes it look like there are people running alongside the car, but it's just shadows. Sounds freaky. But I know it doesn't make sense for there to be shadow people fast enough to catch up with the car out in the woods. But it's enough to at least make me uneasy. Well, if any shadow people attack you, I'll be here to help you fend them off. I'm glad that you're my shadow people fighting partner. I wouldn't want it to be anyone else. I know, right? I'm a goddamn pro at fighting shadow people. Huh? Looks like some kind of abandoned shack. Do you want to check it out? Or something? Yeah, alright. The two men get out of the car and approach the abandoned shack. Man, this thing looks like shit. I wonder when this thing was used last. Wanna go in? What if it's dangerous? The worst thing I can think of is a family of raccoons living in there. Not a serial killer or broken floorboards or a crackhead. I'm sure it's fine. I mean, if we can fight off shadow people, we can fight off serial killers, right? Dude, I'm getting paranoid. I guess that makes sense. They walk into the dipladated shack. The, <clears throat> the door creaks as it opens. God, it smells in here. God, yeah. I bet some animal died in here. Let's hope we don't find the animal. The blonde man approaches one of the old windows and wipes away the layer of dust coating it, allowing him to see outside. It's the same deer. Holy cow. It's the deer. Don't say a word. What happens if I say something, though? No, I'm going to stay silent. I'm going to stay silent. Good. I don't know what you were thinking back there, but if you were trying to run me over, you could have at least finished the job. I'll have you know I'm a very important member of this community. My loss would greatly detriment the forest. Do you know how many of my kind are run over by those machines of yours? Do you know how many friends I've lost? I'll let you off the hook this time, but if you ever try anything like that again, I'll be back and you'll come to regret your actions. Hey, what are you looking at? Huh? Oh, nothing. Mm -mm. Alright, it kind of looks like there's something over here. What is it? Some kind of box. Not super bad condition. The blonde man walks over to the small bearded man who is holding a small wooden box. I wonder what's in it. Same here. Do you think we should open it? Might belong to someone. Should be fine. It looks pretty old. Must have belonged to whoever owned this place. Yeah, let's open it. Why not? Open it. Hell yes. Inside the box is an old piece of paper. Oh, perfect. And nothing else. Is it a letter? Looks like it. Are you going to read it? Got it, boss. Dear Jacob, it's been a while, which I'm not really surprised about. 
after what happened last time, I don't blame you for ignoring me. This is be this is probably sketchy, but I need to explain myself. <laughs> For the past few months, I felt this weird urge. It's like I'm drawn towards that one spot in the woods and I don't know how to explain it and I want to bring you with me. I know that you probably never want to talk to me again, but I miss you. I don't know what came over me. Whatever that was wasn't me. I never hurt you in a million years. I love you. Sincerely, David. She lovers, huh? Creepy. Err, yeah. You ready to leave? Yeah, I think we've seen enough of this place. The two leave the shack and get back into the car. The car continues his trip down the road. The parents called earlier. Oh, I told them you couldn't talk. Yeah, can't say I really want to talk to them. What did they say? When they heard my voice, I could hear them get all tense. It was like a judgmental stare, but in audio form. I can't believe they're still trying to get in touch with me. You think after all that they did, they would figured I'd want I'd want them to let me be. Your parents suck. They sure do. At least you got me, right? Yeah, I've got you. The truck approaches another turn. Let's take Lincoln Street. Hey, do you want to turn on the radio? Sure, what station? Doesn't matter to me. Got it. The better man turns to some new age alternative station. Interesting choice. Hey, I like this stuff. Whatever you say. You know I was in a band. Oh boy, here we go again. We were a battery acid homicide party. That's an interesting band name. The biggest thing... Ah, uh, I forgot. Sorry about that. I forgot to read the rest of it. And what happened to battery acid homicide party? We broke up when we graduated. What did you play? Stu Bass. Bass. Greatest bass player in the school. Oh yeah, I'm sure you were. Hell oh, yeah, I was. Still am. I'm sure you could easily outbase the kids at that school today. I guess I was kind of in a band. Or at least the band. Played the trombone. Hey, are those people? Looks like it. On the side of the road up ahead, three people stand around. Hitchhikers? Should we go and talk to them? Should we keep going or talk? Ah, uh, what the heck. Might as well see what they're up to. Man stops the car next to the three people. Hey. Hi. Howdy. Sup. <laughs> oh, these greetings. Okay, so what are you guys doing here? Waiting, I guess? For what? Don't know. So, uh, how's it going? Are you sure you guys should be out here at this hour? What do you mean? Don't you know about the curse? Ah, oh, a curse. Great. <laughs> ha, yeah. I thought it was pretty well known, but I guess not everyone knows it. So what's the curse anyway? Oh yeah, they say that there's a place in the woods that like draws people to it or something like that. Hello, my fellow viewers. We just found out we got a thing in the house. And all these years I've been living in this house, we never had a rat. Never. No. <laughs> Just no. Okay. Oh yeah, they say that there's a place in the woods that like draws people to it or something like that. And if it draws you to it, you like bring someone with you and then you like kill them or whatever. Probably to sacrifice to Satan or something. I guess the area was cursed by some dude a long time ago. It's not really backed up by anything, though. Well, uh, that's pretty messed up. Whenever people go missing, the locals tend to assume it's because of the curse. How do you know so much about the local legends? Aren't you drifters? Yeah, but, like, that's kind of part of the job description, you know? If we're not going to settle anywhere, we got to get culture somehow. Take in the local vibe. Does it ever get lonely? I mean, the three of us got each other, right? I suppose that makes sense. But a rat, though. A freaking rat in the damn house. Mm -mm. I will not accept this. <laughs> no. Okay. It's a pretty nice laugh. No boredom, no sameness. Every day is different. Leaving behind the old and bringing on the new.
Oh my gosh, I gotta let that sink in. We have rats in the fucking house. There's just no way. We don't get rats. Let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> it's pretty nice to have boredom. No sameness. Every day is different. Leave behind the old and bring it on the new. Don't you ever want to settle down? Not really. We've gotten used to this life. It would feel weird if we weren't moving. What about you, blonde guy? Do you think you will like this life? Do you want to settle down? Huh? Why me? You just look like the type to be like us, a drifter. I... I'm not quite sure. I guess I could probably get used to it. But I've got reasons to stay too. Wouldn't want to leave certain people behind. Like that guy with the beard in there with you? Yeah, like him. Isn't that wonderful? Well, you two have a nice night. Don't go far away victim to any curses. Will do. The man rolls up his window. Staying for me, huh? Pretty sappy of you. The bearded man puts his hand on the other man's shoulder. Glad to hear you don't plan on leaving me here. Guess I'm sentimental. The car continues down the road. Oh, I was supposed to... No, I forget it. I'll just keep going. Hey, do you ever think about how long it's been? What do you mean? How long is... How long we've been together? It's getting close to, what, seven years? I guess that is a pretty long time. I mean, we're moved in together and everything, so have you ever thought about taking the next step it's legal for us to get married now you know I guess it is are you proposing to me not really just kind of thinking about the future the future huh yeah the future you know I love you right I love you too I'm glad the car bounces along the gravel road hey yeah I think I want to go to one last place where you'll see the men drive in silence for a while. Here's the place. The truck stops in front of a huge cathedral in the middle of the woods. A church. Yeah, let's get out. Uh, alright. The driver stops the engine and takes the keys out. Both men get out of the car and look up at the cathedral which towers over them like a giant. Why is there a cathedral in the middle of the woods? They don't think, find that to be suspicious. Not the least bit. We're going outside. Whatever you say, just trust me. Okay? I trust you. The two walk into the church's huge oak doors, which creak as they open and slam the doors. The inside is huge, with marble pillars and statues of saints scattered throughout, like hundreds of eyes staring the two men down. This is the church I come to when I was younger. I came to when I was younger came with my parents. All those statues used to scare me. It felt like they were looking at me, judging me. I always felt like I had to be on my perfect behavior or these statues would come to life and come for me. It's pretty though. This place is beautiful. It's way different from the one I went to when I was younger. Mine was small and the people were there were less welcoming, especially in high school when I, you know, came out. It felt kind of claustrophobic sometimes. Always the same people every Sunday. Always the same preaching and judgmental stares. I always felt like they knew more than me. Like I was committing some great sin without even knowing it. I'm sorry you have to go through that. I guess I was lucky that this place was pretty progressive. It's whatever. I just let them do what, that, what they want. I got away, I don't have to deal with them anymore, and they don't have to deal with me. We've got each other now, and I'm glad for it. The two men walked deeper into the church. This place had a pretty bad history before it was built. 
What do you mean? Before the church was built, there was a small colonist settlement. As you can imagine, it went badly. It started out when they began to attack the local natives. Horrible shit. They go into the settlements and massacre them. I mean, that's colonists for you. Colonists were huge a-holes. They eventually got what they deserved though. The leader of the colony was the local pastor, pretty average Puritan pastor, ruled by the word of God. Well, I guess he had an epiphany one day. The colonists had turned to, turned to a life of sin and taken part in carnal desires of forgetting the word of the Lord. The pastor decided that the only way to atone for their sins was to spill their blood. An entire colony in one night by one man. The pastor went from house to house killing everyone inside before they could even realize what was going on. Once everyone was dead, he put a curse on the land and brought the hatchet down on his own head. That's dark. Let's go further in. Why would you want to go further in after hearing that or knowing that? Alright, the two men walk up to the front, to the pulpit. A statue of Jesus looks down on them with diligent, watchful eyes. Eventually, a French nun came here and found the cathedral, and has been here since. And what about the curse? It said that if someone is vulnerable enough and exposed to this area long enough, they will be affected by the curse. They'll be drawn here. I think we both know this is going how this is going to end. Oh no, 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 no. The blonde man, now with the blank face that looks but doesn't see, reaches behind a pew and pulls something out. It's a hatchet. Please tell me this is a joke. Don't be a wishful thinker. We know that they'll find, we'll know what they'll find come Sunday morning. Our bodies sprawled out in the church, on the church floor, our blood intermingled into one big pool. A hatchet covered in that bright crimson. No, this isn't you. Of course it's not me. That's how curses work, don't they? Don't you think it's romantic? You get to die with your lover. You get to swim around in your own sin just before you die. Um, what is this, Romeo Juliet twist? What's going on? <clears throat> no, I don't know. I know you don't. I know you won't do this. We've been together for years. We love each other and no curse can ruin that. Life isn't like the movies. You can't just reach in and pull out the man you once knew. It's just me now and we have all the time in the world. Please, just put down the axe. It doesn't have to end like this. Excuse me for a second. I love this coffee mug. It has my name on it. Hope you guys can see that. but. Anyways, the bearded man takes a step forward, reaching an arm outstretched. We'll be okay, just like always. Your naive, naive, I can never pronounce this word. Your naivety is amusing, but we both know your efforts are futile. You're better off just running away. And if I run away, what happens? I guess I'll have to give up. I'll just have to take the axe to my own school. Then that means I can't leave. Before the bearded man can take another step, the blonde man swings the axe at him and he jumps back. Almost got you. I won't let you do this. The bearded man takes another step forward and is propelled by another swing of the axe. If you give up, it will be easier on both of us. I, I can't give up. Not... Not while there's any chance I can't get him back. The blonde man runs towards the bearded man and swings the axe. The bearded man falls down. As the bearded man falls, something falls out of his pocket and rolls to the floor. <gasps> it's a box. Was he going to marry you? What? It's a small box. I love you so, so much. I've had that on me for a month now. Waiting for the moment. After all these years, I finally decided I want to spend my life with you. I've never loved a man as much as I've loved you, but this isn't you. You were going to propose? You wanted to propose to me? 
You're the reason I stayed in this town. If I had never met you when I came here for college, I don't know where I would be right now. If I'm going to marry anyone, I want it to be you. That's why I can't let you go through the, to go through with this. Come on, hun. Put the axe. Put down the axe. Let's get out of here. The blonde man falls to the floor, weak. The axe slides away as he drops it. The bearded man picks up the box and goes to the other man and helps him up. Come on, let's get out of here. The bearded man helps support the other man on his shoulder and they begin to make their way out. They limp out of the church, passing the St. John Mitchell stairs and the marble pillars. They emerge from the mouth of the church and the bearded man helps the blonde man into the passenger seat before getting in the driver's seat. Hey, hun, what is it? Take me home. Of course. The two men drive through the night. As they drive, it starts to rain. Not a violent rain, but a peaceful one. Oh, excuse me. Drops of water sprinkle the windshield. Oh, excuse me again. As the two men sit in silence. They can't be sure whether the curse is gone or not, but they have a feeling they won't have to worry about it anymore. Tree branches are go by overhead, like arms reaching out for a warm embrace. The creatures of the forest sing loudly. It is a song of peace and of love and of hardships overcome. While the two men don't talk, it's not an uneasy silence by any means. They don't need to talk. Eventually, they stop in front of a big log house. This is their house. This is their home. The bearded man helps the other men out of the car and they walk into their home. And they walk together. Ooh, good ending. Matrimony. Wait, so there's more than one ending? I will do this in parts then instead of trying to do it all in one gameplay. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you all in another video.